As we heard, it was a dramatic and consequential return for John McCain to the Senate floor, his first public appearance since being diagnosed with brain cancer. While his vote helped Republicans open up debate on health care, he laid out the difficult road ahead to replace the Affordable Care Act, and he called on his colleagues to change the tone and the behavior of the Senate more broadly as well. Our deliberations can still be important and useful, but I think we'd all agree they haven't been overburdened by greatness lately. And right now, they aren't producing much for the American people. Both sides have let this happen. Let's leave the history of who shot first to the historians. <coughs> I suspect they'll find we all conspired in our decline, either by deliberate actions or neglect. We've all played some role in it. Certainly I have. Sometimes I've let my passion rule my reason. Sometimes I made it harder to find common ground because of something harsh I said to a colleague. Sometimes I wanted to win more for the sake of winning than to achieve a contested policy. I hope we can again rely on humility, on our need to cooperate, on our dependence on each other, to learn how to trust each other again, and by so doing better, serve the people who elected us. Stop listening to the bombastic loudmouths on the radio and television and the internet. To hell with them. They don't want anything done for the public good. Let's trust each other. Let's return to regular order. We've been spinning our wheels on too many important issues because we keep trying to find a way to win without help from across the aisle. That's an approach that's been employed by both sides, mandating legislation from the top down without any support from the other side, with all the parliamentary maneuvers that requires. We're getting nothing done, my friends. We're getting nothing done. And all we've really done this year is confirm Neil Gorsuch to the Supreme Court. Our health care insurance system is a mess. We all know it. Those who support Obamacare and those who oppose it. Something has to be done. We Republicans have looked for a way to end it and replace it with something else without paying a terrible political price. We haven't found it yet, and I'm not sure we will. All we've managed to do is make more popular a policy that wasn't very popular when we started trying to get rid of it. Senator John McCain on the Senate floor today. We asked more than 20 Republican senators to join us tonight. None accepted our invitation. But we stay on Capitol Hill for a Democrat's perspective. He is Senator John Tester of Montana. He served in the Senate since 2007. Senator, we're very glad to have you join us. What did you make of uh, what John McCain had to say today? Well, I think he was spot on. Uh, John's a statesman, and he certainly has respect from both sides of the aisle. But this, this place is broken, and uh, we do need to work across the aisle, and compromise should not be a dirty word. And we need to negotiate, and we need to take everybody's input and come up with the best possible legislation. And th that's certainly not what happened with the health care bill that we've dealt with over the last seven months, the various ones that have come out. But the bottom line is this, Judy. Uh, this country was built by people working together. Washington, D.C. is far, far, far too partisan. And, uh, and we need to start working together. And I think John McCain was right on that. Is there any sign that that's going to happen? Is one senator's speech on the floor going to make a difference? Well, no, I think it's going to take more than that. Uh, and, and I will just tell you that I am blessed to be able to work with a guy by the name of Johnny Isaacson on the VA committee. And together, a Republican and a Democrat, along with a really good committee, have been able to pump out some pretty good bills that the president's been able to sign. And we've done that by communicating with one another, not embarrassing one another but working for the best uh, interest of our veterans. And I think that if, uh, if this, the Senate would uh, take a look at, at, at the successes we've had over the last many years, it's been by people communicating and working together, negotiating and compromising. And I think we need to start doing that more and more in the Senate. And there's no better place to start than with a bill that impacts one-sixth of our economy, this health care bill. Well, let's talk about that health care bill. Now that the Republicans have been able to get it on the floor, debate has begun, do they have the votes, do you believe, to get it to a point where they repeal the Affordable Care Act and come up with a substitute that they like? I have no idea because I don't know of anybody that voted today that knew what they were voting on. 
uh, they were voting on potentially a House bill that was going to be replaced with something else that we don't know what it is. And, and, and I'll go back to John McCain's words. Let's go back to the committee process and start working together. But that's going to have to be something that Mitch McConnell requires rather than trying to craft something with a limited number of people and a limited number of input that actually doesn't move the health care system forward and make it more accessible and more affordable, especially for folks in rural America, because we really get pounded by proposals like the House bill or what's even worse, the Senate health care bill that came forth. I mean, uh, it, it could literally shut down health care facilities, and that is what they've told me as I've gone around the state and visited face-to-face -face with these folks. Well, Senator, what we're hearing now is that what the version that may have the best chance is what they're calling skinny repeal, which wouldn't do away with everything, but it would do away with the individual mandate. It would do away, I gather, with employer mandate penalty and the medical device vice tax. Is that something that comes any closer to a consensus? I don't know that that's a, that's, that's a kind of reform that we need in our health care system and I think it may be more of a bait and switch to be able to get a bill that you can get a number of votes to pass it out and then take it to conference and replace it with a really bad bill and that's my concern. So you don't think that that version uh, which some Republicans are saying would make them happy would bring some conservatives on board and perhaps entice the moderates. You're saying you don't see that as well, moving the ball. Look, I, I don't think it's, it's going to move the ball. I think there's another agenda here, and the agenda is to uh, do some really bad things with Medicaid expansion and to block grant Medicaid, which really hurts rural states. I think it hurts the whole country, and not to address uh, pre-existing conditions and lifetime caps. And, and that, if that's the direction we're headed, then, then that's not the direction I want to go. I think that that skinny bill, that bait and switch bill, whatever you want to call it, Trojan horse repeal bill, uh, that bill uh, is, is not where we'll end up at. And uh, I don't think you get the conservatives with that bill and I don't think you get the moderates either. So I, I think what's happened here is you've got Mitch McConnell that's had his make a vote today on something we don't know what it's going to end up with and him crafting another bill to put it up to be able to change the bill in conference. That's all very uh, convoluted in the weeds, but that's where we're headed. So, Senator, you mentioned Medicaid expansion in your own state of Montana. I'm reading an Associated Press uh, report that talks about the number of Medicaid enrollees having far exceeded the number that were expected. A, a number of people in your state worrying this program can't be sustained. I guess they were, they were expecting maybe 30,000 to sign up. It's been 80,000 who've signed up, and there's worry that Montana can continue this. Isn't this the exact sort of thing that Republicans say what's making this whole process? Uh, unsustainable. I think, I think the Medicaid expansion has been an incredible success in Montana and has really helped people get health care for the first time in their life, the working, working folks out there that couldn't afford health care before. I think this is about priorities. And if our priority is to make sure that people have access to affordable, uh, affordable health care, then, then we need to move forward. But we've got 77,000 folks that signed up for Medicaid expansion in a state of a million and 50,000 people. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think it's a good thing because now we've got people that are going to school that are healthy, that are going to work that are healthy, that own small businesses that are healthier. And I think it's, it's, it's an important step to take. But uh, I think it's about priorities. We, we, we need to make health care a priority in this country. Democratic Senator John Tester of Montana, we thank you very much. Thank you.